Hey, in this video we're going to have a look at how to sum all the elements in the list and to start with I'll just talk about the general strategy that we're going to use. So we're going to use um, this method of recursion called tail recursion and I've done a video on the different styles of recursion it's called tail recursion so you can check that out but basically we're going to make use of another variable called the accumulator which we're going to use to progressively calculate the result as we recurse down so what we'll end up doing is initially we'll, we'll call a, a predicate called some list and it, it's just going to accept a list and then we're also going to have the query caller provide a variable so we can store the final result in and the very first thing that we want to do here is we want to um, extract the head and tail out so the head to start with is going to be 1 and the tail will be 2 and 3 because there's only um, these two elements after 1 so and then initially we just want to set the accumulator to be the very first element of this list so you can just think of we need to set the accumulator to head to start with because that gives us our initial starting value and then we're just going to recursively call ourselves again but we'll pass in the tail as we want to slowly reduce the list um, so we can make progress towards the base case so we pass in the tail this means that the new head will be the first element of 2 and the tail will be 3 so we're slowly reducing the list here and that means we want to add the head to the previous or the, um, the current value stored in the accumulator so that means the new accumulator will be 2 plus 3 uh, 2 plus 1 which is 3 so it's essentially just going to um, add the head to the accumulator and then you can just you can see that on each level the accumulator is going to store the current value and um, as we keep going down this will keep building the result for us so we'll call ourselves again this time we pass in the tail into the next call so doing this that means that the head is now 3 and the tail is nothing seems there's only one element in this list so there's no tail and then we add the head to the accumulator so 3 plus 3 is 6 and as you'll realize the sum of all these is equal to 6 so now the accumulator stores the final result and notice that the tail is empty so if you think about what will happen next the next call will need to trigger the base case so I guess now we can consider what the base case could be so we need to really match on an empty list so I guess we can just say this base case match an empty list in arg1 position and the only other thing to do is to we need a way of storing this accumulator result back into the result variable and I'll cover this um, when we get to it but it's quite simple but now we should just get into writing the code for it and hopefully it will make some sense so just um, reduce this down a bit so basically we just want to start with this first step so we want the, the query to be written like this but we also want to make use of an accumulator variable but we don't really want to expose the accumulator variable to the query caller because if we write this in the console and they pass in a result 
then this is what we want them to write. But we also need to set the initial accumulator value to be just anything really. Just We're going to set it to the first element, but we don't really want the query call to be passing in the accumulator because that's more of an implementation detail. And additionally, the query caller could write in any value, which is going to make the actual result be incorrect because whatever the accumulator value is going to be, then the elements will just get added on to the accumulator value. So this needs to be 100% accurate so the correct result is calculated. So we'll just hide these away. And the way we do this is essentially just programming to an abstraction. So we can set up another rule here that allows the uh, query caller to just uh, call one rule only instead of knowing about the accumulator. So what we need is we need something that has that can accept a list and that we can bind the final calculation to this value which is just a variable. Remember these variables can be called anything they can be called x which just denotes that it's going to be a variable for the purpose of storing the end result in but to be descriptive we'll call it result and then because it's a rule we need to do this symbol this is the rule head and now we'll do the rule body where we'll go ahead and call another rule that will actually do the recursion for us and this is where we want to basically have a list in the first argument position then provide some accumulator value and then we just want to pass through the variable that will be binded to the final result and we can clean this up a bit but this is the general pattern to start with the list here we want to grab the head and tail out so we can do this in one step here by just using the head and tail with the bar notation which allows us to individually access the head and tail separately so we've got the head and tail like we've got up here and now we just need to set the initial value to the accumulator as the head so we've got our head here right so if we want to set the accumulator to what the head is representing the first element we know that the second argument position is going to store the accumulator so we may as well just directly store head in here um, y you can also think of this as doing this essentially It's, it's the same thing, it's just saying the accumulator is going to be binded to the value of whatever the head is but since we know that the accumulator will be stored here we can just go ahead and put head here um, directly without needing to create another variable so we just need to go ahead and implement um, the recursion now because this is when we're going to start um, passing this into the next call so what this means is that we want to accept another list which will be what the tail is um, in the previous um, stack frame but um, because we've reduced the list to head and tail here right this list here we don't want to pass this list down here again we want to instead pass the tail down here so this this means that we just need to ensure that the first argument position is the tail because this will continue to, to reduce the list so we make progress towards the base case. So in our next action that we do, we still want to keep continuing to extract the head and tail out, which means we can just use this head and tail notation again and that will give us access to the head and tail and we know that the second argument position is going to be called the uh, accumulator you can write accumulator here but just for short we'll just write uh, ack and we always need to provide the third argument position to store the final calculated result and this is going to be another rule because that's how Prolog does everything it just does everything through uh, when you need to execute a series of actions you just do a rule you can sort of think of it like a function or a method 
in other programming languages. And now we just need to do what we said we're going to do. We said that in all these subsequent calls, we want to extract the head and add the head to whatever the previous accumulator was. So we need a way to add head to this value here. So this will be the value 2 and the accumulator will be the value 1. So to do this we just need to create another variable called the new accumulator is head plus the old accumulator and you need to write is if you want to do arithmetic in Prolog because that means that the right hand, whatever's to the right of is will be evaluated and the result here will be binded to this new variable and you might be thinking you can do uh, you can just reassign a value to the previous accumulator but in Prolog if a value is already binded to a variable you can't rebind an another value to it so you just have to create another variable so this means our new accumulator will be equal to 3 this is what this will be stored in so this means that we just want to go and execute the next sort of action so we'll recursively call ourselves again this time we need to just pass in the tail so we can keep reducing the list so this means that we'll pass in the tail and this new accumulator that we've calculated which is stored in new accumulator and just pass through the result again and that looks good so this is going to come down to here now which means we extract the head and the tail again so the head will be 3 and the tail is going to be the empty list and then we add the head of 3 to the old accumulator value of 3 here which gives us the new value of 6 so the new accumulator will be 6 and the tail is going to be the empty list so now we need to work out our base case and to do a base case you just write the predicate name again and every time that we recursively call ourselves the base case is going to be checked first because Prolog starts at the top of the knowledge base and scans down until it finds a rule or a fact that it matches or unifies with and you can check out my unification video if you want to know a little bit more about what unification is but it's essentially just trying to match something that it was uh, called with so we call it with these three arguments that so it's looking for something that matches with these so we want to match tail to be an empty list in the first argument position because that's what the next call is going to be the next, the next call is going to sort of have I'll just clean this off a bit so yeah, the, the very first argument is going to have an empty list passed into there. So we need to ensure that that matches. And we need a variable here to accept what the accumulator is going to be passed in. And in Prolog, variables, that's a V by the way, variables can store any value so we need just to give this a variable here you can call this literally anything you want it doesn't matter but um, as long as it's got a capital letter for the first um, letter then that's all that matters for a variable so to be descriptive we'll call this the accumulator because that's what it is and our goal here is to bind the accumulator result to the final result that the query call is going to see so we need a way to sort of transfer the 6 that's going to be binded to the accumulator into the third argument position so it can be stored in this result variable which will be elevated back up to the original query call 
and you can do this just by giving it exactly the same name and by giving it the same name all that's going all that prolog is going to do is is that it's going to just pass in the same values because they're the same variable names they're exactly the same value so 6 will be binded to this accumulator variable then it will be shoved into this one because they're the same thing um, therefore that's a way to um, transfer a value to a different argument position and that looks pretty successful at the moment but um, we'll just go ahead and save that and give it a run so remember to reload your file YouTube 2 and then we can just test it out with some value so result equals 6 try it with a couple more this should be 15 that's correct so yeah that's that's the general way to reduce a list in prolog and get the sum and I mean the real secret to this is just recognizing that first of all we're using tail recursion so these represent the stack frames that we've created on the way down and as we recurse on the way down this accumulator variable here is progressively storing the calculated value so when we finally get to the base case the final result is going to be already calculated so we don't have to do extra work like normal recursion where we unwind on the way back up and have to rebuild the value when we're down here it's already done so that's the cool thing about tail recursion it's more efficient and um, the compiler can make optimizations so all, all the other thing to mention is is that because we're using tail recursion these result variables here so this is what the query types the query caller types in essentially all these result variables here they're all linked together that they're all referring to the same memory address because when you do tail recursion then when you get to the very end the final this will be 6 and it will get shoved into this variable in the base case which will in turn this third argument position will be accumulator right and because these this is in the third argument position and this is in the third argument position the level above doing this binding here in the base case will cause this result variable to have the value 6 and because all these result variables are sharing the same memory address that means that when this binding down the base case happens that means that 6 will be stored in the shared memory address here so all these levels above are going to see the final calculated result and therefore the original query caller is going to see the value 6 so you just remember that um, when you do tail recursion this is sort of the relationship that happens and it's only in the base case that you're just transferring the accumulator to the final result and yeah that's that's pretty much all I wanted to summarize with because it sort of helps you visualize a little bit better on how this sort of passing mechanism is working but yeah I'm gonna keep doing a few more videos and stepping through some more examples but uh, yeah thanks for watching and uh, catch you next time